Sawadee Cup and welcome to another TNT coming to you from Suwanapum Airport in Bangkok. Well, one thing you can say about the recovery of tourism here in Thailand, it hasn't quite gone to plan. Both the destinations from where people are travelling from at the moment are not what was expected, as is the number of tourists isn't quite meeting the expectations. Of course, Thailand is open. I mean, the Pattaya bars are open. The beaches in Phuket have never looked better. The shopping centres are all open in Bangkok. And, well, there's plenty to do, just with fewer crowds. So, at some stage, people will return to Thailand and Bangkok. But it's not going to happen immediately. Even with the high season looming, things are going to be a lot quieter than people would have expected but you can take advantage of that and travel here if you can. Now, you can go out onto the tarmac and see the number of Thai Airways planes that are still parked. I come here at least once a week and there's at least half the fleet of Thai Airways still gathering dust out there on the tarmacs. And we noted last week that the schedule for the, or the winter schedule for Thai Airways hasn't added one single flight. So things are not quite going to plan. It doesn't say that Thai people would be very keen to see you back in the country, but people should cut their cloth accordingly and plan for the unexpected, because we've certainly got a few more quiet months, maybe even years to come. This is TNT. And just like that, here we are back in Phuket. And uh, just a very quick note before I go on. Uh, last night, the flight was delayed about an hour and a half. Now, I've actually flown with uh, almost the same airline all the way through the last two and a half years. Some 133 flights I've amassed. That's going to slow down dramatically. But uh, I, I do need to note that even though the flight was delayed last night, only been uh, one or two delayed flights all that time, a Thai Vietjet actually went out of their way to, uh, to firstly apologise, to keep us informed every five or ten minutes, and also they handed out snack packs to everybody. So, I mean, I'm not really sure how much better you can uh, control or uh, manage a delayed flight situation. It happens to all airlines, but they did actually handle it very well. So kudos to uh, Thai Vietjet. You deserve a tick when you get things right. To today's stories and we start off with a little bit of politics and uh, here we go. Special holiday, says the Bangkok Post, to clear roads for APEC Summit. Now we've got the APEC Summit coming up in November and it uh, looks like the government are going to try and keep things a bit quieter around the Queen Sirikit Convention Centre where the, uh, the convention is going to be held, or APEC, and uh, so they're going to send everybody home for a few days. And uh, the cabinet declared a three-day government holiday in Bangkok, Nontabri and Samut Prakan. So sorry, if you live in other parts of Thailand, bad luck, you're going to have to go back to work. Uh, the APEC is on from November the 16th to the 18th, a holiday in the three provinces approved by the weekly cabinet meeting. APEC, the Asia-Pacific Economic Forum, brings together the leaders of 21 member countries, basically all the countries sort of around the Pacific Rim. And uh, the Bangkok Summit's going to be held at the Queen Sirikit National Convention Centre. The leader of the world's largest economy, the US President Joe Biden, is unlikely to attend as he'll be hosting the wedding reception for his granddaughter, noting that uh, I think they're sending the Vice President of the United States uh, in his stead. Now, who's this? This is Nual. Nual, who's the mascot being selected for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. I sort of think that we're probably going to see just about as much media about Nual than uh, the rest of the cooperation convention. Anyway, that's APEC coming up next month, and well done if you've scored yourself a couple of holidays. Just a, uh, another little bit of politics. Myanmar junta leader not invited to the ASEAN summit. Uh, Cambodia is the chair for ASEAN this year, and they were hosting the summit, but looks like the Burmese junta leader hasn't been invited. Myanmar's junta leader has not been invited to a regional summit next month, host Cambodia said yesterday in a fresh diplomatic snub. 
The Association of Southeast Asian Nations has led diplomatic efforts to resolve the turmoil, but there has been little progress on a five-point consensus, as we've pointed out, far too little and far too late. And uh, here we are, a year and a half into this conflict, the latest uh, coup in Myanmar, and literally nothing has happened except a lot of people have died and there's been a lot of violence. Phuket taxi drivers promised to quit fighting rivals. Yes, well, there has been just another little taxi fracas, this time in Kamala, up the front of Café Del Mar. There's a line of taxi drivers, the traditional taxi drivers, and somebody called uh, on a ride-hailing app. A car came in, and uh, there was a little bit of a misunderstanding, I suppose you could say. And the story goes on to say that uh, following a recent fight between a traditional taxi driver and an app-based driver, the uh, Phuket authorities have dis- decided to host a meeting to urge local taxi drivers to focus on the reputation of the province. There they are, all meeting. The first one, taxi drivers who cause problems for officials or fellow passengers will face legal consequences. Their licences could be suspended. I would have thought that that would have been the rules anyway. Number two, illegal applications that offer taxi services without permission will be prosecuted. Yeah, it's got to be fair across the board. The ride-hailing apps need to follow the rules, no doubt. Number three, the Phuket Provincial Transport Office will tighten the measures and seriously investigate illegal acts. Each representative must promise to avoid fights and any violent actions that could affect the reputation and tourism of the province. Again, I would have thought that they would have been investigating these illegal acts before now. And finally, the official promised to provide 15 official taxi stops in the Kamala sub-district if every taxi driver could follow the measures. Now, I don't decry these people for making a, a fair living. I mean, heaven forbid, it's hard, to, hard enough to make a quid these days, and they deserve as good a chance as anybody else. It needs to be fair for the ride-hailing apps and the taxi drivers. They all need to be on a level playing field. But it's not a level playing field here in Phuket. The fact that you arrive at the airport and are faced with set exorbitant tra- transfer fees from taxis, well, taxis are meant to have meters, and they should be using their meters. And the fact that they only don't seem to work in Phuket compared to other provinces is the travesty that needs to be sorted out. To our next story today, and a little bit more politics, and this from Bangkok Post, Rift rumours fly as Prowit skips cabinet meeting. Uh, Hashtag storm in a teacup. This story is really nothing at all. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Prowit Wongsawan took sick leave yesterday and missed the first cabinet meeting chaired by PM Prayut Chanachar following the latter's return to Government House. Prawit Wongsawan was the caretaker Prime Minister and these two have been buddies uh, since their army days and uh, pretty much are sort of part of the, or two of the gang of three that literally runs the powerhouse of the Thai government currently. General Prowit's absence on Wednesday followed rumours that he was offended by remarks made by the Premier on Monday during a teleconference call about the flood situation. PM General Prayut was quoted as telling the meeting that he did not want to see any welcoming committee and that his visits to flood-hit provinces would not add to the burden. He said, I'm healthy and can take care of myself. Please take care of people in need of assistance. I'm not a burden. The Bangkok Post has taken the fragility of the caretaker Prime Minister, his age, and a quote from the Prime Minister together and come up with 17. I don't know why they even bothered with this story. It's a complete storm in a teacup until, well, at least we hear something from General Wong Sawan saying that uh, he was offended, which at this stage he hasn't. And further, following the cabinet meeting, General Prayut said he would pay a visit to Prawit at his house, but refused to respond when asked if General Prawit was sulking in response to his comments. Well, pretty much because there's just no story at the moment. I don't know why the Bangkok Post have wasted their time publishing this. But uh, we should thank our sponsors, Five Star Marine. Thank you very much for your support. There's a link in the description of this video if you'd like to head out to one of the islands. 5 Phuket.com is your first port of call. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. We're going to be talking about the floods or the lack of floods on TNT.
you're on TNT and thank you very much for watching. Please, if you do get a moment, just subscribe to the channel. That will help us a lot. Now, there has been a lack of coverage this morning on the uh, potential floods in Bangkok. It's been brace, 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 get ready. There's high tides in the Gulf and there's water rushing down the Chao Phraya, but not a lot of news, except for this. The Nation has reported that Tannen transistor radios fly off the shelves after PM's advice to locals in flood-hit provinces. A popular model of a transistor radio has become a best-selling product in Nakhon Ratchasima after the PM Prayut suggested that people follow updates on the flood situation via radio. The second paragraph there saying that a visit to the old radio shop in the city district showed a lot of retailers had come from other districts to buy Tannen transistor radios to sell at their stores. Prayut said that government agencies will face difficulty if the communication system is down, so people might have to listen to the broadcast via their transistors. He mentioned the 2011 floods where power was out in several areas people had to get updates from their transistor radio. So what is this radio that's jumping off the shelves? It's called the Tannen Transistor Radio, FMAM, and it's gonna cost you the princely sum of 239 baht, that's seven or eight US dollars. Sounds like a pretty good investment to keep one of those. Of course, you do have to keep on buying the batteries because uh, you're probably not gonna use it that much, and the batteries will go flat anyway. You'll turn it on when the flood waters are rising in your home and it won't be working. I'm not sure if it's got a, a DC cable, but anyway, that, that's the Tannen radio. To this story from Calsod English, a reminder of an important anniversary today, and it's the Tamasat University massacre, which was back in 1976. The historic football field of Tamasat University, which was an important site during the 1976 massacre, is undergoing maintenance yesterday, just hours ahead of the commemoration of 46 years since the incident. The incident saw paramilitary and vigilante groups lynch dozens of people, mostly students, who were accused of being communists or communist sympathisers to death. The official death toll was 45. Now just note a uh, article, Tamasat University Massacre. This was written last year by myself and was a bit of a roundup of exactly what the Tamasat University Massacre was about. So that was written last year. Noting there in the second paragraph, officially some 45 people were killed and over 145 injured, but historians generally propose the number of casualties was much higher. A day in Thai politics that needs to be remembered. That's today. And if you'd like to read that article, I've put a link in the description of this video. You're watching the TNT program on Thursday. Thanks for dropping in. Now, talking about the floods, let's have a quick look at a comparison of the 2011 floods to what's going on now. Now, on the left-hand side of your screen is the 2011 flooding. You can compare that to the last two years, which is in the middle and on the right of the screen, and you can see that uh, the, the flooding levels are much, much lower than they were back in 2011. So although the flooding's been horrendous up in the center part of Thailand, up in the north around Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai, uh, and also in the northeast in the Isan areas, particularly Ubon Ratchatani, Sisaket, and some of the other Isan provinces, it's nothing like it was actually in 2011. So uh, let's just keep that in mind as we compare the, uh, the water flowing down the Chao Praia that may or may not reach Bangkok and cause problems in the next few days. Well, it's been really good to see that the BMA, the Bangkok authorities, have done a lot of preparation. So uh, they are probably much more aware and much more prepared for these floodwaters than they ever have been in the past. But with that, I thank you for dropping in on this Thursday. It's been great to have you. And hopefully you're a little bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand today. Thank you to our sponsors, Five Star Marine, and thank you for taking the trouble of clicking that button. Maybe even click the like button on your way out. Thanks for dropping in. We'll see you tomorrow.